So it's kind of unbelievable that it's taken this long for me to cover this on the channel, but uh, let's talk about it. The Encyclopedia of Horror Movies. The complete film reference. Over 450 illustrations in black and white from the Cabal Collection, edited by Phil Hardy. What this is, is a big part of my late adolescence. This book uh, came out in 86. I got it in 86. This was literally the only thing I wanted um, for my birthday that year. My grandmother came through. She ordered it because it was not available in the local bookstore. This book has been republished a couple times. There's uh, been a couple editions since, including a hardcover edition and another paperback edition like this is. And uh, under the title, The Overlook Horror Encyclopedia, and under this title again, all copies are fairly pricey on the aftermarket. So if you see it at a reduced price, you'll want to jump right on it because chances of getting it cheap as the years go by are getting harder and harder. I want to speak a little bit before I open it up and show it to you about one of the things that I think is so important about it. And that's, you know, today all this information is available online um, between IMDb and Wikipedia and a host of film sites. You can get every piece of information that's in this book somewhere online. What you can't do is really browse that information. And that's what this book allows you to do. Uh, it provides a chronology of the horror genre from its very beginnings to 1985. And I understand that a lot of time has passed since 1985, and so it's missing a lot of information. That later edition, uh, by the way, does go up to 88, uh, partially through the year. So that might be worth picking up. I will say that one thing about this that's not entirely comprehensive is it doesn't come for international completely. Uh, because of the time period, there wasn't the accessibility to all markets. So, uh, for instance, Hong Kong and India and uh, even some European films from Germany and Spain are missing. Um, in some cases, in some of those countries, more than a few titles, quite a few titles in fact, or even the majority. But it does cover the major exports from those countries that got to America and got theatrical releases, and I think that's a really cool thing. When I received this book, I simply devoured it, and you know what? It's huge. It is It is a, a big, you know, coffee table book, and it never has really left the centerpiece of my collection. I refer to it all the time when I'm looking up a film. It's easier to go online and just Google stuff up. But you know what? Then I don't see what else came out around it. And that's part of the discovery process that has led me to have, I think, a pretty robust appreciation of the genre as a whole. And I'm not quite as tunnel visioned because of this book. It's easy to be tunnel visioned when you hear the same discussions about the same films all the time online. This wonderful book changes that. So this is the, the same copy. Again, I've only ever owned this edition. And we don't go very far into the book before we have the lovely Barbara Steele from Black Sunday. It's not just going to be the big titles. It's going to be the most important titles. So we start 1898, sorry, 1896 to 1919. And so we start with the, the very earliest horror films. And if you look here, the very first horror film covered... If my camera will focus, it apparently won't. There we go, The Haunted Castle. And what's great is we have all these wonderful vintage photos, of Edison's Frankenstein, and it takes you through each year and all the horror movies that came out in any given year. Now, obviously, I can't go through every page of this book, but... I think, but I have been through every page in this book many, many, many times. Interestingly, they're not completely reviews, I wouldn't say. Um, I would say that they're somewhere between just a factual distillation of what the film is, its importance, its place in the genre. And yeah, there is a little bit of um, editorializing, but it's meant to help someone who has a deep interest in the genre, really navigate through what is essentially a, a very, very, very formidable genre. So we go. A 
Obviously, the 1930s are my favorite decade of horror. Um, every chapter starts off with a description of the kind of state of the horror nation as we enter the decade and the major themes that would be discussed. Obviously, the 1930s bring about the Universal and uh, Fox and Paramount classics. So, in many ways, this is where the horror genre really begins, um, at least as a commercial endeavor in America. But you really, really, really can't go wrong. These these photographs, um, they're mostly publicity stills. But my God, I mean, it's it's just a perfect look at a genre that too often is dismissed. I'm going to skip head to the 40s. We start getting some other classics from a very different era. Um, as the 40s go on, you see a Universal sort of waning, and we start to see some other extreme talents um, start to take over. Um, you start to see the, the genre starting to modernize in certain ways, um, which ultimately would be the end of what I call the golden era. Again, this is how I discovered so many of these films. I would go like, I'd be just reading it page by page and say, Face of Marble? Well, what was that? And, and you read the description and, and you realize, hey, it's a Carradine film I've never seen. And you go and search it out. In the old days on VHS, that was tough. Sometimes you had to order things. But it was also, uh, I had the ritual of going through the TV guide, the free one that came in the newspaper, not the one that you actually bought at the newsstand that was digest size. And I would, uh, I would like, if there was a horror movie there, I'd immediately consult this book to find out like what its place in the genre was and what its history was like. But it's hard to imagine me growing up without this book. It's a big part of my childhood. And uh, incidentally, uh, there's always a conversation that goes on right now about, uh, you know, what qualifies as a horror film. This book does a great job, Barbara Steele again from Black Sunday, of, uh, it does a great job of just kind of allowing the genre to define itself rather than going really way far out of its way to try and, like, force its own interpretation of what the genre would be. The 1960s, um, probably the biggest transitionary period of the genre. Modern, uh, modern filmmaking was really coming into its own, as well as the sensibilities of kind of naturalism in film, whereas earlier horror films were very stylized. We're starting to get a more natural view of uh, horrific events in these films. I'm going to jump forward to the mid-60s. Um, so the mid-60s, right before Night of the Living Dead, um, is really the last gasp of what is the classic era of horror. It's not the golden era, but it's still the classic era. Because what would happen with Night of the Living Dead, and there it is, is that uh, we would kind of usher in the era of more visceral thrills. Um, and that's when Hammer comes on board and our classic monsters from the Universal era start to become more garish and overtly sexual. And the movies get to be a lot harder to classify in a simple way because you start to get Jaws existing alongside The Exorcist, alongside television movies. And uh, that explosion happens because we have this moment whereas these films could be made cheaply and released and make a lot of money on the independent exhibition circuit, um, which really hadn't existed in earlier times. So we start to have an opportunity for producers who didn't have a lot of money to make some money off the genre. So that means we do have um, some really cheap, awful films, but it does mean we get some real DIY classics and we have that early punk rock attitude. Um, you know, we're in 1972 here, right? So we have, you know, in Detroit, we have kind of the emergence of what would become proto-punk. And you have um, a couple years in uh, um, after the release of the first Alice Cooper and Black Sabbath records in 69. So you start to have culturally a lot of things that would have formed the horror genre too. There's our hammer years in their full bloom. So how do you see, as, as a kid, how do you see a photo like that and not want to see that movie, you know? 
Um, yeah, so that is uh, The House of Mortal Sin. It was a Pete Walker film. If you haven't seen it, it's a great British nasty. Um, before the video nasty era, of course, but it's, it's just amazing. 1975, Brian De Palma not only makes Sissy Spacek a big star, but I would argue turns Stephen King into the biggest horror star of all time. Martin. There's Suspiria. So you see, International is covered. It's not covered as well as the domestic. And again, we have individual entries for every film. Um, and those those entries do include, by the way, a bracket at the bottom tells you, you know, the major credits of the film. And I know a lot of people love the 80s. I love that the Company of Wolves is used to represent the 80s. Now, we're not only going to get partially through this decade because the book's going to cut off, but it, this also treats all horror films, regardless of their quality, kind of as legitimate. It doesn't beat up on any of them. And I, I really love that. I really, really love that. So you can have Motel Hell um, next to a much classier film. Um, we have stills from Fulci films, you know, and that's, to me, this, at this time when this book was published, to me, this seems like amazing that this exists, that it's taking the genre this seriously and all of the genre this seriously. There we go. There's the beyond again, Fulci, right with the rep. Uh, the unfortunate remake of Cat People. Love Paul Schrader, but that thing probably shouldn't exist. Tenebrae. Psycho 2, which was a very uh, uh, important early film-going experience for me. And then at the end, we have appendixes. And um, at the time of the publishing of this book, the number one horror film of all time, by gross, is Jaws. Appendix number two, the critics' top tens, in which they go through some major critics and saying what their favorite horror films of all time are. And it's, it's pretty interesting how well, for instance, you probably saw that Peeping Tom appear on um, the first two lists. Uh, that's a, an opinion that today is not as common, but it's great to see that in the mid-80s that was considered uh, really cornerstone. Appendix 3, Horror Oscars. This is something, too, like, today we think of horror winning Oscars as kind of an impossible thing, but it, it used to be more popular for, especially actors. And this is a great research to let you know. Appendix 4, this is a really important one. Selected bibliography. So this allows you to go and visit all these sources and all these great books with all this great information that they couldn't ram into this Finally, an index. Every film covered in the book. So, okay, I hope you enjoyed that look at a book that uh, played an important role in getting my love for the horror genre to be as full as it is. Um, no, no shade against people who just like their big slasher films or their, you know, the, the most obvious choices of the genre, but do yourself a favor. If you can get a hold of a copy of this book, it's worth the money. It's extremely expensive, but it's really worth it to help open your eyes to what the genre really is and how wide and beautiful it really is. Hope you've enjoyed the look. See you soon.
know, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. This is totally normal. Nothing weird's happening. It was just some weird, like, I felt like I was going to get fired at my job at the time. Over and over, it was like some weird thing. I watched like three movies from 2021.